Chicago, it towers more than 2,000 feet above Shanghai with 121 stories. It's called the Shanghai Tower. There it is. It'll be the world's second tallest building when completed in 2015. And the mastermind behind it all is Chicago architect Marshall Strebala. Marshall, it's good to see you. Oh, thanks for having us here. It's, it's an incredible structure, and you've been working on this thing for, what, eight years eight now? Eight years, absolutely. Talk uh, about a labor of love, right? Well, it's a marathon. Doing tall buildings is not a sprint. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet not. So um, let's take a look at this building and, and tell us, first of all, the design itself is striking. I know yeah. there's some, uh, the, the curves uh, is a, are a great feature. Uh, tell us about that and, and also know some, some green features as well that yeah. stand out, right? Well, first of all, I'd like to say, you know, buildings over a thousand feet just don't exist in the world. There's less than a hundred that exist in the world today. So it's a very rare thing to do. It, it's almost like the perfect storm has to exist. There has to be good transportation. There has to be a need for it because there's a lot of people that will live and work in this building. There's a hotel at the top and there's 16,000 people that will come to the office building every day. So the infrastructure is important. Right. So you start there. Now we come to a building of this height becomes synonymous with a city, just like the Sears Tower, just like the John Hancock. You cannot see those buildings without thinking of Chicago. Right. And Chicago had the title of the world's tallest building for years and years. Now it's sort of lost that title. And it's moving to the east. Uh, I worked on the Burj Khalifa when I was at SOM, the world's tallest building, right. and the Zaifang Tower in Nanjing. So I've done three of the ten tallest buildings in the world. So I, I sort of fell into this by accident. Well, Marshall, what is it that, um, that's special or challenging about the super tall skyscraper as opposed to uh. a 50 or 60 story building? <laughs> Actually, it's the ego of everybody involved is the <laughs> biggest problem, and you wouldn't think that. Well said. Okay. And it's not the developer's ego. It's, it's the ego of everybody that wants to be part of it. They want their product in the building. They want to be associated with it somehow. So you've got everybody coming out of the woodwork trying to be involved in it. And right. it's absolutely insane. For eight years, everybody, you know, Marshall, can we put that doorknob on your building? Can we do this? Can we do that? <laughs> right. And, so, so tell us specifically about oh. uh, your vision for this building and, and how it came about and what you're trying to do. Well, the building was always thought about as a collection of three buildings. There's three buildings you can see here. The one in the middle was done by Chicago architect Adrian Smith. Mm -hmm. And that is, it represents China's past. It's a stainless steel pagoda. The second building by Mori, a Japanese developer, is China's present. And so the three buildings make up past, present, and future. The Shanghai Tower is about China's present. It's a very transparent building. It's a very simple building. It's a building about the future. And what it is, it's the world's largest double skin building. Did you ever have a thermos bottle when you were a kid? Sure. It's basically a double skin. You have an outer skin and an inner skin that helps preserve energy in the winter. It keeps the building warm. In the summer, it helps reject the heat. So mm -hmm. the idea was to create the most sustainable skyscraper we could. And it was a competition in 2006, so the idea was to put an extra skin on the building. Got it. In order to, like a coat, you could take the coat off when sure. it's hot, and you could hold the coat in when it's cold. So as a sustainable building, that's what you want to do. Got it. Is this considered to be the best skyline in the world today, Shanghai? Well, in I'm going to go out on a limb. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's what um, I'm thinking. Until someone else does yeah. a better one. Let me ask you one quick question, too. Uh, a lot of folks here, everybody in Chicago mm -hmm. is into buildings and architecture. Yeah. It's in our blood. The Chicago Spire, yes. which is still a dream, a dream that is unrealized, may never get built. What do you think of that design by Santiago Cal is it Calatrava? Calatrava, Santiago. Calatrava, right. Actually, I think it's a beautiful design. Okay. Absolutely exquisite. And a lot of the thinking that went into that building went into the Shanghai Tower. This, this twist of form does something called, creates disorganized vortex shedding. Wind is the biggest force on a tall building. And you have to do things to minimize the wind load on the building. And that twist of the Chicago Spire does that beautifully. We, we've discovered the more twist you put into the building, the less force the structure sees, which is a sustainable, which is a green idea. It's also a very unique thing which is what Chicago needs. Chicago doesn't want to copy someone else's building. It wants its own buildings. <laughs> and if the spire's built, or I should say when the spire's built, you it think will it will add, be? I, I don't see why it wouldn't. I don't okay. see why it wouldn't. But it, again, you, like you talked about before, all these different factors have to come in yeah. place. The but the spire is a residential building. That's Far true. less people. So it's easier to build a residential building than yeah. 
Yeah. A, a residential yeah. building of the same size as the Shanghai Tower would yeah. probably have 4,000 people. If it was all office, the Shanghai Tower would have 25,000 people. So okay. just moving those people from the front door to their homes is a problem. Got it. I could talk to you for hours. I'm so glad you came by. Well, it's, it's, all the best, and uh, I can't well, wait. I can't wait to get you. to Shanghai and see all oh, this. Well, please come by. We'll take you on a tour of it. That's a deal. Thanks, we were just Marshall. up there in a hurricane last week. <laughs> wow. Or a typhoon. I wanted to see if you could feel the movement at the top. And could you? No, no. It was wet, and well, we were getting blown around. But I think you the did building your job didn't move. Then. Well, the engineers did their job. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Over to Mark's trail. How about that, Mark? That is uh, that is very exciting. I've got one quick question. China easy to build in. Uh, if you speak Chinese. Okay. If That's you, it.